pleasure having you once again with us and uh, today we are here at the London Clay Art Center and with us we have Teresa Ainsworth. Teresa, welcome to our program. Thank you very much and thanks for having me on. No, it's our pleasure and as you can see the London Clay Art Center has been here for about 15 years. So let's, let's ask Teresa, tell us a little bit the story of... Yes, we started in about 1981. Um, as a group of potters meeting in a school, art, art classroom in, uh, so I think it was Saunders, but that was before my time. Then they moved to the East London, to the East Lions Artisan Center, where we were there for about 10 years. We had a very small space, actually, less smaller than our store is now for everything. Um, and we were getting really crowded and really outgrown it. So we polled our members and said, what do you think about us trying to find a building and, and buy it and actually renovate it for our own use? So they said, yeah, go for it, go look. So we found this building in uh, 2007. Uh, so we bought it in March of 2008. For, it was derelict, it had a leaky roof, it had no furnace, no electricity, no running water, um, and um, like I said, a leaking roof. And it was filled with garbage. So, but it was cheap. Uh, it, it had, but it had what we wanted. We had a structural engineer look at it to make sure that it was structurally sound. We had um, uh, all the paint and the old tiles and stuff on the ceiling checked to make sure there was no asbestos in it. It, it was old enough, it predated asbestos, so that was yeah. good. Um, and it had a loading dock, it had a parking lot, it had basically, it was on a major bus routes, which is the Dundas, Waybell, Cherry Hill, all of these buses go right by here. Uh, so it had what we needed. So we, we did some fundraising. We had what we called our blue plate dinners, where we, um, as potters, we made a large number of plates with blue on them somewhere. And we had the dinners at um, Saffron Restaurant, which is the culinary training school at, at Fanshawe College. And we raised um, about $75,000 over a number of years of, of these dinners. To, as seed money, we got money from the city, uh, we got money from Trillium, and we got money from private donors and, and ourselves, of course, as well, because we were fairly generous donors. And so we started, um, renovating this building after, in about May of 2008. Um, the first floor we gutted ourselves. Um, so there's pictures of us on our website, month by month as we were renovating the place and up, pictures of us up on scaffolding, pulling down, discussing drywall with our little hard hats and our masks and we looked- Everybody, everybody was working. Everybody was working on it, yeah. As, what you could do, you did, so. Let me, let, me, let me stop you here. How many people were involved in that moment? Um, we had about 50, 50 or so members at that time, um, and probably 30 of them would be intimately involved. The other ones, we, like I said, we have a large number of older members that, and then people were bringing in their spouses, their wives, their husbands, their children to all help demolish the place. And then once we had it, got it, this first floor done, we actually hired McFadden Design Build to do the, the trades, the, the help with, with the design. Uh, we put a new roof on. I live in this neighborhood, not too far away, about six blocks from here. And so my job, because I said we had a leaking roof, until we got the, a new roof on, my job was to come down here every day it rained and empty all the buckets that we'd put upstairs. <laughs> And I would wake up in the morning and think, oh no, not again. <laughs> and then it's like, it was a rainy night. It was a, another rainy night. It rained a lot that year, actually, it really did rain. So one of the things we did, because we knew that hydro and gas, um, you know, natural gas and that were only going to go up. So we put in a geothermal heating and cooling system in here. That, because we were gutting it right to the walls, we could redesign it. So we have out back of the building we have eight wells 400 feet each deep they're a closed loop they're basically a tube filled with antifreeze that is pumped through so it takes the heat from the ground brings it into the building compresses it sends it through the building in the summer we reverse the flow take the heat out of the building and dump it back into the ground so we have no heating and a lot of most of our hot water is also heated with geothermal 
we have a, a an auxiliary hot water tank in case we need it, but it's a, it's a backup, not a, a room. So we have no furnace in here. So we can well. say this, this is a smart building? Yeah, it's a smart building, yes. Okay. It is. There you go. And then, so once we finished the first floor, more or less, we started having classes. We moved in here in um, September of 2010. No, 2009, September 2009. Um, and then we took a deep breath and regrouped and started working on the second floor. Uh, we got, uh, the second floor now has all of our class areas. So we have one space with 10 wheels for teaching wheel throwing. We have more private studios upstairs and then we have another space for hand building, sculpture, that kind of stuff. Theresa, now the, the story is amazing how, how when you come here and you see the building, you are looking, watching right now on TV, of the, the, the location, the place itself is extremely good, extremely well organized. And, um, and yeah, knowing the story is amazing. Now, how many people are involved at this point? At this point, we have about 150 members. All active members, all, oh, all, they're all come here? Uh, about 80, between 80 and 90 of those 150 actually work out of here all the time. The rest of them are people who are members but who have studios or partial studios at home. And so they may have a wheel at home. So they'll just come in here to glaze and, and to fire their pots. Okay. And you know. For now, we're going to go for a small break. And when we come back, we're going to go with Teresa and we're going to do a tour of the place. So we'll be back in one moment. We have all different skill levels, people who have just had a couple of classes, two or three sets of classes, to people that have been doing pottery for 15, 20 years. We have sculptors, we have hand builders, we have people who use the wheel, and we have people that flip back and forth. We use, um, our members area is back behind our store. We have a number of wheels here that they can use that are available 24 hours a day. Our studio is open 24 hours a day, two members. They have uh, shelf spaces where they can put all their pottery and their tools, their glazes, whatever they want to use. We have private studios like these little cubicles here for people who, are, who need more privacy or our production, they produce more than the average person who comes in maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks. This happens to be my rather messy studio right now. We have a fairly state of the art. We have uh, a lot of tools, a lot of ways of working. We have members who are relatively recent, like Anna Maria here, who is more of a sculpture. And over here is our glazing area and our glaze charts. We have uh, Melody here who's glazing one of her lovely big bowls with a, an assortment of green uh, colors. So what's going to happen after she's doing this? After she's finished glazing, it'll go into a kiln to be fired. We fire up to 2185, so 2185 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And over the, it takes, it's a fairly slow process, so it takes about 12 hours to get up to that temperature and about 20 hours for the kilns, which is where we actually, what we call our, our big ovens, to cool down. So it, it's about a 36 hour process for each run. When pots come out of the kiln, they're put here and we actually, um, then whoever's pot it is, will take it home and, uh, or put it up for sale in the store. This is our kiln room. It's a specially vented room right now. We have uh, four electric kilns, and eventually when we have enough money, we will have a gas kiln, but that's a, uh, something to be done in the future. So all pots are fired twice. This is the first firing. It goes up to 1900 degrees, um, and it just makes the clay solid and hard enough, but still very absorbent, so it will pick up the glaze. And then the second firing after it's been glazed is to 2185 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is what it looks like when it comes out of the kiln. 
So you can see the different colors of glazes here. There's a black with a, a ready gold color. There's greens, there's blues, there's... I hope you like what you saw in... Uh, okay, Teresa, I will like it. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. We're very proud of our building and, and we're really proud of our members. We are a really cohesive group. Right now, a lot of people come for classes because they thought, well, I've always wanted to try it, so let, let's sign up for a class. And some, some love it and take another class and another class and another class and then so, say... Okay, so let, let me, because when you say that somebody comes for one class, can they come just for one class or it has to be a, a package? A, a, a session of eight, usually eight classes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's once a week for eight weeks. Okay. Which, How, what's the cost of that? The cost of that is about two hundred dollars plus materials cost. Yeah. yeah. So for the cost of the clay and, and glaze materials and stuff and like that. If I want to participate in one of these classes, should I go to the website to see the schedules? Or? Yeah, you can go to our website. Our next set of classes starts January, the week of January twelfth, um, and you can go onto our website about the middle of December. You can sign up because we have PayPal, or you can phone or come in. Where we have what we call our drop-in class. It's a, once a month, second Sunday of the month. So it would be the second Sunday of December from two to three or three to four. It's $10. You have people, you, we put you on a wheel and lo give you lots of clay and you can just, and we have people running around helping you learn how to center, how to pull a pot up. So oh. very basic, you don't take anything home, but it's a good introduction to, for people who say, well, what happens if I don't like it? I've just wasted $200. So you can say, come in for an hour, it's $10, it's not much of a commitment, and you can see whether you like it. And it's a great sort of introduction for people because they say, yes, I really do like it, and where do I sign up? <laughs> okay, so again, it's two, second Tuesday? Second Sunday. Second Sunday, okay. Of okay, so month. again, it's second Sunday of each, each month, month from 2 to 3 three or, or 3, three to, four. to 4, $10. You can try it and then sign up for the, for the courses. Yes, that's it. Okay, Teresa, it's very, very exciting to, to see how um, an organization like yours is, is growing because it, this is really, really nice, really, really good. And uh, as uh, Teresa was telling us, the location is this Danda 664. Okay, so the event is called London Potter's Guild Potter's Sale, Sale Event. So it's going to happen on Saturday, November the 22nd from 10 to 6, and Sunday, November the 23rd from 10 to 4. Uh, you can go to the Thames Valley Board of Education Center, which is in Dundas and Highbury, and just go there, help these guys to raise more money so they get rid out of the mortgage and by the next building to get more people here. It's a great event. The sale is phenomenal. You will be amazed by all the pottery because there's over 60 potters there. Each of them will have at least one table of all of their works that they've been working for the last six months. So we have two a year, the third weekend of November and the last weekend of April. So. Keep this in mind for your Christmas presents because it's a great place to give homemade, locally made pottery for Christmas. Teresa, thank you very much. Thank it's been you. a pleasure having you in our show and for sure you are feeling the same. I know everybody's going to come, start coming the second Sunday each month and uh, on September, uh, November the 22nd and 23rd at the Thomas Valley uh, Board of Education. So thank you very much, Teresa. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Okay, so we're going to for a small break, and when we come back, we continue in our chat.